Hey everybody, welcome to Margaret Being Margaret. I just, I'm so miscombobulated. I have to go to work today and then I have to, or I get to, do what I've been so busy doing and I'll explain a little bit. But I got up, did my makeup, did my hair, it looked good. Did, just threw on, this is just a t-shirt dress that I just wear here. Decided I had enough time to go out and mow part of the lawn. I'm ready for work. Makes no sense. So I went out, mowed the lawn in this. Um, I have to show you because I'm standing here thinking I'm telling you and then I don't. It's this <laughs> with no shorts underneath and shoes. I look like an idiot. What else is new? So, came back in, <laughs> made myself a quick lunch and I'm going to fix my hair a little bit, get dressed to go to work, and um, we'll talk. I'll be back. Hey, I came home the other night. Gosh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Yeah, you can. This is, look it. I don't know what this is. It's all over my window. It's outside. No, it's inside. It's inside. What the heck is it? All over, drip down. Sorry for the hands and then drip down all onto here. It ruined my shape, my blind. I can't put the blind up now. I don't, I don't understand it. It's, look at, I, all I can think of is one of the cats climbed up in the window and got sick. That, how, that makes no sense, zero sense. All right, that's the best I can do. You're gonna have to put up with that because <laughs> I've got to get ready for work. I just have to see how much damage I did by deciding to mow the lawn. I don't know. It just felt like it needed to be done. I've got my mirror here and I am going to be looking into that. I'm so sorry, guys. However, let's see what kind of... The eyes are okay. You know, I have been using... Without my glasses, I'm blind. Um... Prep and Prime 24-hour eye base. And my eye makeup, I have trouble getting off when I wash my face at night. I'm probably scrubbing off a layer of skin with it. So mostly my makeup looks like it's going to be okay. I'm only going to work for an hour or so. I just have to do the books because Brie is on vacation so they not being kept up just brush my teeth so I don't have stuff in my lips in my teeth outside of this we are gonna make do because because I said so, so I have only been into work twice this week which is quite a bit for me I should have been there a lot more. We know we had a million things going on at the house. So my week was to go into work, which did not happen. And from there, go do other things. Now my other things, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. We have, there is a baby in my life. <laughs> You know, there's a couple babies in my life, we know that. But one baby, her dad is away for a couple weeks. So I'm helping a little bit, which is the most wonderful, wonderful feeling. And going over in the evening and taking dad's shift where mom could use a little bit of a break. So I am getting to play with a baby. Oh my God, it feels so good. So anyway, that's why I'm so busy and that's all I'm gonna say in that subject. But I'm going there late afternoon and staying until early morning and then coming home. So my days, I'm, I'm sleeping when I get home early, early in the morning or yeah, you know, one, two in the morning. And then I'm getting up a little later 
So my day is a little miscombobulated right now and I'm not doing 90% of the things I want to do. The cats are concerned. They don't know if I'm coming or going. Can this do? Can I just make do with this, please? Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to do anymore. All right, so glasses on so I can... Hey, glasses on so I can talk to you. Oh, folks. So I'm in a really, really busy little phase. And, you know, with the... I thought the um, bathroom would be done this week. Once again, I've been watching the vanity and I'm not sure it's going to get here. The second shipment, again, it doesn't say who shipped it. Gosh, darn it all. Um, but we'll see. So I think they're starting Monday. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, Monday also the back door of the salon needs to be replaced. The fire door. It won't open and close. Kind of important. Um, so anyway, that was supposed to be at 7.30 Monday morning. Now, I'm going to still be helping with this infant the next week, which means get home very, very early in the morning and need some sleep. 7.30 in the morning on Monday, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be up at 6 to get to the salon after just getting to bed. And then the, the contractors should be coming Monday to start ripping out the bathroom. So for this whole next week, I'll get home early in the morning, try to sleep, but the contractors will be here, won't have a bathroom. God forbid I have to pee. I'm going to have to leave the house and find a bathroom. So it's a very convoluted week or two. Well, my goodness. Um, nice thing happened. The people with the door said they couldn't make it this Monday and will come a week from Monday. That's a good thing because I wasn't going to cancel it because you know if you cancel something, it takes forever to get it done again. So I have another week of, including the weekend, of being on baby duty. I'm not a complaint. Not a complaint. I am having a ball. But everything else, I'm going to squeeze it around it. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you hear it? I'm going to run over to work, do the books, then go play. <sighs> with the baby and that's what I've been doing the last week. It's crazy busy, but when I do get home, I just kind of pock my butt and go, yeah, like, okay, I'm done. The good thing is I'm not doing much eating um, and that makes me so happy, except that it's been five days and I haven't lost an ounce. You know, it's not gonna happen and I really want it to. So notes from our last conversations. If you haven't read the comments, you're missing out. I'm cracking up. So many of you can touch the floor with your hands and straight legs. I feel left out of this group. Almost nobody said they couldn't do it. I'm sad. A lot of people feel like they're in their 50s when they're in their 70s and 80s. And for the one or two that told us to knock it off and just be our age, my response was, I don't know how to be my age. I remember how to be 50, so that's what I feel like. I remember how to be 40, that's what I feel like. I don't feel like 69, whatever 69 bloody feels like. And if I want to say I feel like I'm 10, I can say I feel like I'm 10. A lot of you emotionally felt younger. It, so many funny comments. Um, Kathleen said she felt usually like, uh, mentally, a naughty 12-year-old. Somebody else said they felt like a teenager with a smart mouth still. But a lot of us mentally feel very young still. A lot of us have, um, in our minds, still acting like a teenager. Now, I don't just do it in my mind because a lot of times what I'm thinking comes out of my mouth or in actions. Too bad. The mirror... Um, me saying I don't know what to do with the bathroom mirror. A bunch of you said Habitat for Humanity. I hadn't thought of that. I'm going to wait until I open them to make sure I don't keep one that's broken because you know I would give one away, open the one I kept, and yeah. So we'll be smart about that. But then it will either be Habitat for Humanity or I think local to me there's a um, home for veterans where they build home for veterans. So one of those, I'll see if they want that. I'm sure they will. That was really nice. 
a lot of you laughing at my cop story where I was a runner and the, the cop paced me. I have one more. <laughs> you guys just set off my memories. I worked for Sears Roebuck and Company back in the mid 70s. And I worked at the switchboard and then as a secretary. Of course, they had undercover um, surveillance detectives because you didn't have all, as many cameras back then. And when they would catch somebody shoplifting, they'd call the local police and haul them off. Never thought too much of it, but one day they got a young girl shoplifting and they were taking her to, to court. So they needed a female to go with her and they asked if I would do it. I was so, I thought I was all that in a bag of chips, if you've ever heard that saying, because here I am, I was 23 maybe, and I'm in the back seat of the cruiser with this girl and we're driving out. All of a sudden it realized, you know, I realized everybody that's looking at us doesn't know that, no, no, I didn't get arrested. So all of a sudden I'm doing one of those, you know, those perp things where you're looking down so people can't tell it's you. I embarrassed myself so much. Again, because I thought I was all that. Every time I do, the universe slaps me. I love that. I love people <clears throat> that wrote things that I just really liked and make me laugh, so I'm assuming they will you too. You know, I talk about how, well, today, look, I'm dressed up to mow the lawn. <sighs> people must think I'm crazy. Or, you know, I'm out running and I think I look okay. And Sunshine Girl that wrote, she was working in the garden and thought she was looking her very best until a neighbor drove by, stopped, backed up and asked her if she was okay. It's like, really? Take the air out of my bloom, why don't you? And it's like when somebody says, you know, a lot of times, especially at work when they say, you okay, you look tired. I'm immediately thinking, oh crap, I must be tired and I must look like heck. Don't do that to people. <laughs> Of course, I do it too. I do it, my Yvonne at work, I can tell when she's getting a migraine, her eyes go. And I immediately say, getting a headache, when she stops and goes, oh yeah. It's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring it to your attention. Oh, sorry about that, but that was funny. Um, Mary Ellen gave up driving recently and she said it wasn't too bad for her because she didn't enjoy driving, which is a good thing. But I'm thinking about that as getting slightly older. I think. That must be very, very difficult. Now, I've told my kids, the minute you think I'm a risk to anybody else, you just take my keys, and I promise I won't scream. Now, I don't know if I can keep that promise, but it's too darn bad. You take my keys, you, we sell my car. But to not have, especially we're here, we need a car to get around, I would think is giving up that last bit of independence, and that does worry me. The other thing, Mary Ellen, she also said that she's, she started fasting and breakfast is her very favorite meal and she's um, giving up breakfast for her fast. So she's giving up something that she truly loves. Knock it off. And I said that. No, don't, you do not give up things you love at this point unless they're hurting somebody else. You fast around it, Mary Ellen. Have another piece of toast or another egg. Enjoy yourself. And then on the other side, um, Garden always was feeling guilty because her breakfast had been a brownie and ice cream. Oh, woman after my own heart. If I'm going to have breakfast, yeah. So we're all over the place, but I love that. I love that we are just accepting ourselves for the most part for who we are. And Garden always had a story since I was sharing some of my embarrassing moments and I have plenty to share. I'm going to read this, not verbatim, but she was um, saying that a couple years ago she went to a park to a little girl's birthday party um, at a pavilion. But when she walked up, she didn't recognize anyone and she helped herself to a plate of food and sat down and she struck up a conversation with the lady at the next picnic table and asked her where the birthday girl was, you know, wondering if she and her parents were late. And the lady gave her, her a confused look and said, he is over there next to the gift table. And she said, whoops, wrong kid, wrong pavilion. And she said, I was so embarrassed. I asked around and found the boy's mom and apologized for crashing his party. She laughed it off. 
most embarrassing part was having to go up to the gift table and retrieve the gift intended for Lucy. I felt so bad taking my gift back right in front of that little boy, and for a fleeting moment, I considered just leaving it, but it was a frilly little dress, so I didn't do that. I don't carry much cash on me, but I had a $5 bill, so I handed the boy the money and told him, happy birthday, and then I skedaddled. I did find Lucy's party. She had just been around the pav pavilion. Uh, when I got there, I sat next to one of Lucy's grandmother, and she asked where where were you? And I said, another party. And she said, who else had a birthday? And she said, I don't know. Some little boy about 10, I think. Oh, I think that's so precious. And I love that she went up to the mom and apologized and gave the little boy $5. Now that is definitely something I would do. Thank you for sharing that. You know, a couple years ago, my friend Carol and I went to Newport, um, Rhode Island, to the mansions during the Christmas season. I had never been through them when they were all decorated and we thought that would be gorgeous. So paid our money, walked in and you know, oh, just beautiful. But we walked in with no problem. And it's nice because you can even get translators in different languages and just walk around on your own. But all of a sudden we're in this line and the line is going on forever. And people are walking right by us and Carol and I are getting confused and finally look like, what is this line that we're in and why isn't it moving? It was the line for kids to sit on Santa's lap. Two old ladies in this line. We laughed so hard and said maybe we should stay and both of us sit on his lap and have a picture taken, but we didn't because we didn't want to take time away from the kids. But you know, there's always something stupid to do, right? Yeah. So I have to go. I will edit this and try to get it up right away. We'll see. You all have a great day. I think I'm going to open the windows before I leave. It's still hot, but not horrible, and I like getting the fresh air in. And um, if you can't behave, make sure you make the most of misbehaving done talking.